Okay, well, let's now welcome on board the management of India Mart. Um, the company has delivered their uh, quarterly numbers. We have seen, you know, uh, a lot of traction in the stock price as well, undoubtedly. So let's bring on board Mr. Dinesh Agarwal, the founder and CEO of India Mart. Mr. Agarwal, thanks so much for taking out time. Um, you know, the first um, the first parameter when we look at India Bath's numbers is the collections. And what we notice is that there has been a drop in your collections on a sequential basis. So if you could talk about that, what's the reason behind that? Yeah, so uh, quarter four uh, has always been a very different uh, uh, for collection. If you look historically, you will find that the quarter four, because of the March ending, many businesses want to uh, complete their budget and complete their uh, <clears throat> tax matters. So quarter four has always been uh, much bigger than uh, quarter one or quarter three. So if you compare with the uh, quarter three, uh, we are uh, almost in line with the collections. Uh, and if you compare with the last year when there was a severe lockdown and this year there was a severe pandemic uh, uh, <clears throat> wave, during the uh, April and March, so April and Mar uh, April and May were uh, more or less washed out, and I think, uh, but the recovery has been pretty sharp, and we have been able to put a uh, hundred and seventy crores of collection from customers. Okay, Mr. Agarwal, you know. Um, it Web traffic in India has grown significantly and as we know, the pandemic, the whole work from home scenario has sort of uh, given it a further boost. Uh, do you see that continuing and, um, you know, do you see more and more businesses opting for platforms like yours as opposed to, you know, the traditional physical mode of connecting with businesses? How do you see India Mart sort of capturing that opportunity? Yeah, if you see our web traffic and inquiries and unique uh, senders trend, uh, more or less you will see that uh, ever since July last year, they have grown at uh, around 30-40% uh, 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 as compared to the previous years. And the good part is in this particular quarter was that despite the fact that there were uh, severe uh, COVID 2.0 uh, wave as well as uh, uh, you know, partial lockdowns, we did not see uh, traffic decline just like in the previous year uh, lockdown in April, May, June. Uh, so our traffic is best ever this particular quarter at 268 million. And we uh, hope that this would be a sustained uh, adoption of internet uh, for all businesses, uh, including India Mart. And that should help us uh, uh, in the monetization in times to come. Mr. Agarwal, very curious to ask you, with Reliance's uh, you know, recent most acquisition of uh, Just Dial, Tata entering the space as well, how is it that you are seeing the business landscape evolve and uh, what kind of competition could it throw up for you? So, I think if you look, look at India Mart or if you look at Google or if you look at Facebook uh, or, or even Amazon or Just Dial, all of us together, I think we are still uh, scratching the surface of the huge internet population that has come online in the previous uh, three, four years. And uh, One India Mart uh, is solving very small section of a problem. One Just Dial is solving a very small section of the problem. I believe the more and more entrepreneurs uh, join in the foray, and more and more uh, capital uh, that will come into the market that will expand the market further. Having said that, India Mart has uh, created its own space and a network effects which you have seen uh, started kicking in in the last two, three years where there are more buyers coming in, so more suppliers coming in. And then we put up an AI-based uh, <clears throat> database matchmaking engine to do a better matchmaking. So we believe that uh, more players would uh, expand the market and over the time those who perform better and those who are able to deliver better uh, will uh, probably gain lar larger market share. So I don't think uh, any of this is a negative news, it's a better news for us, better capital coming in, better uh, entrepreneurs coming in and expanding the entire ecosystem.
Sure. A large part uh, of your focus so far has been on your ARPUs, which have been going great. Just wanted to understand that how is it that you're managing to scale up and stay put at 50,000 uh, rupees uh, in terms of your ARPUs? Um, and also, how is it that you think that you can better these levels? Maybe deeper penetration? Yeah, sure. So, uh, if you see, ARPUs have been growing uh, at a, um, a smaller pace from 33,000 about four or five years ago to about 44, 45,000 until last year, uh, slowly and slowly. However, in the last year, because ARPU is a function of total revenue and divided by the number of customers that we have. And since in the last one year, if you see, we have lost uh, uh, first in the last last year, first quarter, about 14,000 customer as against that, uh, uh, then we uh, make up the customer base. And then again, because of the second wave of the COVID, we again lost about six, 7,000 customer this particular quarter. And most of the loss has been coming at the bottom of the pyramid in the silver monthly category. So uh, that is uh, bumping up the revenue uh, per customer because most of the upper value customers are still staying with the India Mart because they see a longer term engagement with India Mart. As uh, the number of customers start to increase, I think ARPU should stabilize at around uh, 44, 45,000 rupees as it was. This particular quarter is probably an aberration. Mr. Garwal, good morning to you and uh, that's a very interesting perspective uh, and it makes sense now when you talk about the increase in ARPU. But that leads us to the next question which is you have a unique uh, sense of how the reopening trend is going and a lot of people have stopped short of calling it uh, right now and saying that the trend is completely reversing. What are the signs that you're seeing right now? At what stage are we at right now? So. As I said, unlike the last year, same quarter, the buyer traffic hasn't really dipped madly. Uh, the buyer traffic has actually improved, so internet adoption has further improved. But however, if you look at our customers, most of the customers come from very different industries uh, and they are small and medium businesses in nature. And many of them have had a irreparable uh, losses uh, because of the two successive uh, waves and lockdowns and many industries are still out of favor. So I think uh, on one side in certain industries we are seeing a, a very good recovery almost like a VCF recovery. However, in certain industries such as you know related to education or related to uh, you know fooding or related to conference event uh, high fashion, I think we are still seeing a very slow recovery and many of the smaller businesses, in general are facing challenges not able to survive so i guess uh, it will be a mixed kind of a recovery uh, given uh, and people are very cautious this time uh, unlike the last time when uh, people thought uh, in january february march that the corona is over because this particular uh, <clears throat> april may thing had come in as a pure surprise and it was a lot more severe I think people are very cautious uh, this time. So on one side, we are seeing a very good recovery in certain industries. On the other hand, uh, I think certain industries will take time to recover. Mr. Agarwal, there's a significant amount of cash on your books, 2,500 crores, which is roughly four times your annual turnover. Uh, Aisha has already mentioned the fact that this is now seeming to be developing as a very competitive landscape for you. Any potential for inorganic growth that you're looking at and how are you going to use this cash? So, uh, as I have mentioned earlier during the our QIP fundraise time, so uh, we had about uh, uh, 1,000 crore before the QIP and raised about 1,070 crores during the QIP. And if you see our deferred revenue is about 700 crores. So that leaves us with uh, about 1,500 crores of 1600 crores of uh, you know investable cash and uh, we have made certain progress in the areas of uh, like accounting software logistics software distribution management and order management and we continue to invest uh, uh, inorganically uh, either in a minority and continue to look for any uh, inorganic acquisition opportunities right 
You know, that uh, brings me to my next uh, point, uh, Mr. Agarwal. The fact that up until now, your acquisitions as well have been uh, just minority stakes. Why is that that you've not gone out and, you know, bought a full company uh, up until now? Uh, or is there a strategy here which is in place? So those, those two are different ones. See, one, one we have started to uh, do in organic foray only about a year ago. You know, our first investment in Vyapar was only in 2019 and then everything uh, happened in 2021, more or less. So we are we are started to look at the entire space, uh, scouting for the different kind of companies. Uh, I think that we have made some two, three investments in the last quarter and we'll continue to look for uh, one or two every quarter. That will give us more insight into what companies we would like to acquire. Because we once you do one investment, you're probably meeting 20 companies in order to understand. And that will give us uh, ability to understand that which companies are uh, really ready and can fit in into India Mart uh, ecosystem well. Uh, so if you look at our ecosystem development slide, we had said that we will continue to focus on accounting, tax invoicing, logistics tech, distribution management, procurement management, uh, uh, payment, uh, invoice discounting, and those areas. And if any uh, opportunity comes in for uh, complete acquisition or majority acquisition, we will see uh, how soon can we find that. Okay, Mr. Agarwal, great to have you on the show. Thank you so much for taking the time out and speaking with us.